Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So a few months ago, Kim, Chloe, Courtney, and Chris, they did an interview with Variety where they spoke about their businesses and they even shared advice for other women. Or transitions or things that other people might be having a hard time dealing with at home. And Kim went viral for giving women this advice when it comes to business. Kim says, get your fucking ass up and work. Work, bitch, work. Okay, maybe she didn't say it all like that, but let me play for y'all what she actually said, okay? I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You have to surround yourself with people that want to work. Have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do because you have one life. No toxic work environments. Show up and just do the work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. So that is what Kim had to say during that interview. Now, it's no secret that the Kardashians are one of the most powerful families alive. Kris Jenner has marketed all of her daughters. Some are even billionaires. The entire family put together, their net worth is definitely in the billions of dollars. So it might sound a little surprising to learn that these same women that are giving all this harsh advice and telling people to get up off their ass and work, they've had quite a few failed businesses themselves. So we're gonna go ahead and take a deep dive into the Kardashians business ventures, where we can see that they clearly try to sweep as many of these failed business ventures under the rug. But before we get into their failed attempts, Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up and subscribe down below. Once again, welcome back to my channel. This is Lovely Tea TV. Make sure you have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. So if you don't know, the Kardashians had their own nail polish line um, with Nicole by OPI. And theirs was called the Kardashian Colors. It was a line of nail polishes that were inspired by the colors and the styles worn by the Kardashian sisters, Kim, Chloe, and Courtney. The line contained 14 shades, each with unique names like Prismatic, Rainbow, Electric Lemonade, and things like that. The colorful nail polishes were available in both small and large, and the bottles went from anywhere from $14.99 to $34.99 for a larger bottle, as well as three different formulas, regular polish, quick dry, top and base coat, and glitter top coat. So if the colors are decent and the line was decently priced, why was it that this nail polish brand for them failed? Well, a lot of people said that the names of the colors did not help. While it's common for them to play on the Kardashian name, a lot of the names of the polishes were just ridiculous and they got on people's nerves. For example, one of the polishes was called Rainbow in the Sky Lee. Like, girl, really? You couldn't think of anything better than that, Kim? Okay. It was a twist on Kylie Jenner's name, of course, but a lot of people thought that these nail polish names were cheesy and that they were trying too hard and, and people were not interested in nail polish made by the Kardashians whatsoever. Another business venture that fell for the Kardashians, if you don't know, there was also a Kardashian card, card with the K, okay? And it was definitely one of the most controversial business launches that the family had ever encountered. As a matter of fact, the Kardashians started such an uproar that the reality TV sisters ended their glitzy prepaid debit card less than a month after its debut because so many people were upset by this card. So why did it fail? The main reason why it failed was because of the crazy amount of fees. A 12 month Kardashian card cost you $99.95 just to own. So just to own the card was damn near $100 a year. On top of that, the card purchase fee was $19.95 and 12 monthly fees of $7.97. Regular bank and debit cards are typically free. You just go into your bank and you ask for a card. Well, the Kardashians not only wanted you to pay a yearly amount, there was also a charge of $9.95 just to ask for a card. And then you have to pay $7.95 a month 
for having the card. It was insane. Users of the Kardashian card, they also paid fees of a dollar each time they added money to their card and a dollar fifty each time they spoke to a live operator. In addition to those initial costs, they were also charged two dollars each time they used the card to make an automatic bill payment. So you have sisters that, who at this time they're millionaires. They're already rich. But once again, they're doing this predatory card system on people that they know don't have it like that. And they know their fans are young, they're impressionable, and they're not going to ask a lot of questions. So when a lot of the adults got involved and a lot of, you know, grownups started looking at this so-called prepaid card, you know, that their college students were, you know, ordering or their high school students were ordering, a lot of the parents flipped out. Like, those fees were ridiculous. You don't even get fees like that with regular cards from the bank. Another failed venture was Kris Jenner's short-lived talk show. Known as the Kardashian Momager, Kris Jenner is not shy from accepting brand deals herself or marketing her daughters for extra money in the bank. So when she launched her own talk show called Kris, with the K of course, was anybody really surprised? Absolutely not. What was so surprising though was that her talk show only lasted a few months <laughs> before it ultimately got canceled. How is that possible? Surely this insanely successful momager and business mogul, you know, who was able to make a platform for her kids could keep a platform for herself. Well, that wasn't the case. Her show ended up getting canceled because people were just not into it. It literally only lasted 10 episodes during the summer of 2013. She might have a huge media presence, but the Fox execs were not shy about letting people know that Chris was uninteresting and the talk show was boring. And another reason why people hated the show is the fact that Chris never talked about anything interesting that was actually going on with the world. She only talked about herself and her kids. She brought up inappropriate stories and it was just very odd. You know, it was nothing about what's going on with the people, you know what I'm saying? The economy, there was nothing about that. It was just a bunch of vapid talk. And it was like, if we want to sit here and listen to you talk about your daughters all day and do an Corporate story times, we can just watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. We don't need Keeping Up with the Kardashians in a talk show format. So at that point, audiences were turned off. Um, the only saving grace that happened during her talk show was the fact it was around the time that Kim and Kanye had their daughter Northwest. So the world got a chance to see baby Northwest on the talk show. That was the first time we got a chance to lay eyes on her was on the mom's talk show. So once again, they used, you know, the baby for clout to keep her show going. But even the cute little Northwest, as adorable as she was, could not keep her grandmother's show going because a few days after her debut to the world, the show was canceled. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. Now, even though Rob Kardashian is not as popular as his beautiful sisters, he's also had a few failed ventures himself, okay? Let's not leave Rob out of this. If you guys remember, Rob also created his own sock line, and the sock line was called Arthur George, which was just really weird. Two first names for a sock. I think I'll stick with Haynes, okay? But anyways, his sock line was Arthur George. And the sock line had a great variety of styles and designs, everything ranging from business professional to fun socks with pizzas on them. Mmm, pizzas, huh? Pizzas, you don't say. Mm-mm, Pizzagate. Oh, I'm sorry, let me stick to the script. Um, I mean, you know, who doesn't love a pair of silly socks, honey? You know, how could this go wrong? We all love socks, especially socks with pizzas and shit on them. Um, but according to Rob Kardashian, you know, his sock venture ended up failing due to his public and legal drama with his baby mama, Black China. When Rob Kardashian posted explicit photos of Black China, she fired back by getting a restraining order. And according to Rob, that he could not promote his business the way he could prior to the restraining order. Now, he stated this in an interview. He says, previously, the line's success was in large part due to my regular posting and general promotion on social media. But because of Angela's request for a restraining order against me, this included various probations on what I could post online. In order to avoid any potential future issues, I nearly eliminated my social media presence. Now, what I find interesting is that, and I'm no Black China fan, y'all know that shit, but what I find interesting that he's so quick to blame her for her failed business ventures, but sir, you chose to post her nudes online, which is illegal, that's revenge porn, so you can't blame her for that. Even though you were upset and she was cheating and playing you and all this other stuff, you still chose to blast her and post her nudes online, so you have to take personal responsibility for what you did. So if you weren't allowed to post because of the 
restraining order, that is your fault, sir, not hers. Okay, let's get that clear. So now another failed business venture that a lot of people don't know about. And I did talk about this in my deep dive a few months ago, but a lot of people don't know that Kris Jenner had her own mega church, honey. Yes, honey. Just call her pastor Kris Jenner at this point. Now, this isn't necessarily a failed business venture as much as people call it a business scam. OK, so a lot of people are shocked to know that Kris Jenner actually opened a church. Her church was called the California Community Church. Could that not be any more L.A.? You know what I'm saying? It's not the Ebenezer Baptist Southern Church of Christ. No, it's the California Community Church. Interesting. So basically, um, this was considered a nonprofit organization, and they also charged their members $1,000 a month in addition to 10% of their tithes from their income. Now, this was founded with Kris Jenner's assistant in 2008. Given how well-known the Kardashian-Jenner lifestyle is, the news that they chose to secretly launch a church caught everyone off guard. A family that is known for promoting themselves in the media, and especially in very sexy ways, like let's not forget, you know, the momager, a.k.a. the pimp, had her daughter out here, you know what I'm saying, screwing on sex tapes and selling sex tapes to the sex industry. Um, so, yeah, people found it very interesting that this same family wanted to start a church, especially being that they don't really talk or promote any type of religion on their show. So people didn't understand it, and they also didn't understand why they weren't so quick to announce that they were opening a church because, like I said, everything was hush-hush. Well, when you discover how much of a tax break, you know, owning a church puts you in, it's not really surprising that Chris decided to own her own church. She wanted to spread the word of God, but she also wanted to spread some dollar signs as well, asking members to pay you money and give you tithes and to show your faith in God by providing to her and her family. It was just not a religious justification. So for the Kardashian Jenner clan, it wasn't just about spreading the word of God, because think about it, if you have a church and you're telling all your members they have to give you 10% of their tithes and all of your kids go to this church and all of your kids are members, think about this, 10% of somebody's income like a Kim Kardashian would amount to about $5 million. So instead of giving that to the IRS, they can just pay it as tithes to the church. And guess what? That money comes right back to the Kardashian-Jenner clan. So they didn't open up this church to spread the word of God or to heal, you know what I'm saying, their followers. They basically opened up this church to help give them tax breaks. And a lot of people do this. The fact that there's no taxes that have to be paid by the church is why a lot of people will open up churches for really nefarious reasons. So those were just some of their failed business ventures, which is why I found it very interesting when she was being so arrogant and talking mess about what women needed to do. Now, Kim is getting ready to embark on a new business venture for y'all who don't know. She's starting her own true crime podcast. Isn't that interesting? You know, y'all know regular folks can't have nothing. You know, regular people on YouTube started their own little makeup lines, you know, started from the bottom on up. Then here comes Kim Kardashian. So anything that they see is possible. Popular with the mainstream with just regular people they try and home in on and capitalize off of it so now they're doing the same thing but now unfortunately for Kim all that copying and trying to follow other influencers and regular people on social media honey as rich as she is she herself decided to jump on the cryptocurrency scam and what happened is that a year ago Kim Kardashian was out here promoting Ethereum Max all over her Instagram page. Kim Kardashian was paid over $250,000 to publish this on Instagram. And of course, a lot of her fans, they ran to go, you know, purchase some of this Ethereum. And they went to go support this crypto because Kim Kardashian was promoting it only to find out that this was nothing but another cryptocurrency pyramid scheme. So now the SEC a.k.a. the Securities and Exchange Commission, have gotten involved. So now Kim Kardashian can add another failed business venture to her list. She has agreed to pay a $1.26 million fine, okay, for promoting that. She was paid two hundred and fifty grand, but now has to pay $1.26 million. So this was not a good look. This was not a good business venture. But this is what happens when you try to put your hand in every single pot without really vetting the situations properly. They try to jump on every hot trend. And sadly, this particular trend came back to bite Kim Kardashian in her big old ass. Well, actually, it's flatter now. She took a lot of that fat out because she wants to be slim again. Okay, and her, you know, in her petite ass. All right, all right. 
We see you, Cam. Looking good. Looking good, sis. Well, some breaking business news now. The SEC and Kim Kardashian appear to have come of some sort of settlement. Yes, yeah, CNBC's Bertha Coombs joins us now with that story and other money news this morning. Hey, Bertha. Hey, good morning, Stephen and Savannah. So the issue is Kim Kardashian back in June promoted this uh, crypto called Ethereum Max. She disclosed it was an ad, but the problem was she needed to do more according to the SEC. According to SEC Chair Gary Gensler speaking on CNBC just a few minutes ago, he says, you know, when a celebrity is promoting a security, they have to say not just that they're being paid by how much. Kim Kardashian was paid a quarter of a million dollars for that promotion so it's going to be very interesting to see where their next business venture goes but with that being said i leave the question up to you guys what do you guys think about the kardashian slash jenners do you guys consider them business professionals or do you feel like at this point they just dip their hands in anything they can get their hands on not to mention all the stolen ideas they've taken from black women and you know outfits and jewelry and things like that they've been called out for a lot of shady stuff but these are just a few of their failed business ventures child if i was to go through them all we'd be here for an hour so with that being said thank you guys so much for taking time out to watch so make sure you guys leave a comment down below feel free to share the video don't forget to thumbs up the video and last but not least make sure you still subscribe to the channel let me know your thoughts on the kardashians and their failed business ventures thanks again for tuning in deuces if you want the latest news in the streets join us in tune in for the tea breaking news with integrity so sell your friends and your family it's the lovely tea tv show bringing you good tea and good vibes it's the lovely tea tv show be sure to share like and subscribe